What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here, and as you can see, I have the wrong display up because it changes my displays all the time. So here's the stats for the video, and here's what we're looking at here. We've got ourselves um, some Terry McLaurin. Give a little designing live there. Boom, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome Henry, the guy watching right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a couple people jump on in here um so i asked you guys for suggestions on what to do found this nice photo of terry got a new got a new wacom not sorry uh uh wacom tablet um good morning good morning so we're going to be using that um so i want to do something with a lot of lighting so what we're going to do is figure out some lighting for this. Uh, Ryan wanted me to do something with text like this, which you, we could probably do. What's up, Tyler? What's up, Chris? What's up, Andrew? What's up, everybody? Let me hit a couple buttons here. So doing text like this would be fun to do. We could do that. And then, you know, Someone said, hey, let's do this. I think he was joking, but it'd be funny if we actually did incorporate something like this. I don't know what we could though. A little, ha little pattern. I don't know, fun joke. Always good. Um, all set there. Good, great, wonderful. Okay, so let's get started. So really what I kind of want to do with this is I want to have some sort of dark scene, uh, maybe just some lighting behind him. And then really get in and just do that you do like a big a nice lighting exercise with yellow and red on this jersey um, so let me look up let me look up some hex codes for the redskins i guess it's not the redskins i kind of want to do something where it's like we just say it's the red wolves just because that's like the best name that they can pick i don't know why i just did that i want i want this color I'm just putting these boxes on here of this color because then it will put a spot in my memory. Let's try that again. So if I put it up here, now the now they're both up here. Uh, so we can get rid of this. So let's do some text first. Let's just type out a scary Terry, for Terry McLaurin out of the Ohio State University. You know the rest. 2017, uh, Big Ten Champs. I got that going on. Let's uncheck some of this nonsense. There we go, we got some text on here. I still think some rendition of the Hogs. Was that was that on the final thing? I know they had a bunch of like, the Senators and stuff like that, but. That stuff's not fun. So let me turn this back on. I've done one piece similar to this style here. Um, and I don't know the way they did it. I know the way I would do it. So we can really do that. <clears throat> let's go back to Photoshop. Oh, we're in Photoshop. I just need to turn this layer off. Let's find a font that's good to use. Something that's not um, stereotypical. There's some mono fonts that work really well for sort of stuff like that. I do like this VCR sort of thing, but not that one. Or I just use like Helvetica or something like super, super basic. I kind of wanted to do like Scary Terry, take up like the whole thing. Let's do that. I don't have Helvetica Noir on here. Hold on, that's a problem. Oh no, it's over here. Helvetica Noir um, Condensed Black. This is what Adult Swim uses for their bumpers. So we're gonna use that because why not? All right, so we're gonna just blow this up. So it says Scary Terry, nice in the center. I'm going to, I don't know, convert this to a shape. I lost in fantasy by 
three because of someone. Marquise Brown. The Red Hawks, okay. Andrew, you got a general question. Why are Macs preferred by designers? Are they actually better overall? Is there a more specific reason? It's a good question. I've used Macs. It doesn't really matter. It's more personal preference. Um, there used to be more of like a power dynamic. They're more powerful. You can build a computer though. I think the argument for which one you want is going to be more personal preference nowadays because computers are so powerful in general. Um, I always do Mac, but that's because I know how to use Macs. I worked at a Apple specialist store for four and a half years in college. So I know how to use a Mac. If something goes wrong, I know how to fix it. That's why I use them. Um, they're just better <laughs> is what I will say. And then people specifically designed with Dan will argue, no, they're not. So it's all up to you. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this text three times. And we're gonna do RG, do we wanna do RGB or do we wanna do CMYK? It doesn't matter because I'm gonna change the text. So we're gonna do red, we're gonna do green, and we're gonna do blue. And I think this should work. Okay, we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna go into the blend, the layer styles here. We're gonna turn off all the layers except for the one we want. So we're gonna only turn on blue. So perfect, that's exactly what I want it to look like. I only want green and then I only want red. So now is where we can play around with this. Now, I don't know how the other guys do this. Um, I'm gonna do this my own, my own little way. Uh, let's put a threshold on top of this. Except that's gonna break everything. Is that gonna break everything? I'm assuming it will. But well, we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna open up the liquify. Oh no. Oh, the shape layer is not a smart object. That's weird. Okay, so now I got my 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 pen here, which is not connected apparently. Let's connect that, and then everything's gonna break because I just connected this tablet via Bluetooth. Watch. It'll happen. Should probably make sure it's turned on. There. Up. Oh, hold on. On. There. Now it's on. The whole point of doing this stream is so I can play with this and get better at it. So hopefully this comes up. Until then. So what we're gonna do essentially is we're gonna use the liquify tool and we're gonna we're gonna do this a bunch. And basically, I'm just going to drag up. And we're basically going to keep just doing this um, until we feel like stopping. And we're going to make sure you can still read scary. So maybe we have the S come off like this. And again, I don't know how the other guys do it. They might do it this way. You could probably use a... Displacement uh, map. But we're going to do it this way. So, you know, it's all... This is just all, like, tax... No, it's not taxing. It's just all sort of grunt work on how to do it. Yeah, so airdrop. So like Dan, Design with Dan recently got a PC. And me and Garrett Little were like, oh, not okay, not Garrett. I was like, you're dumb. You're going to miss it because there's, um, it just works. The connectivity between having a phone that I can airdrop to, you know, texting on both. There's a lot of stuff that just works connectivity wise. It's also a reason I would use a Mac. Like I airdrop photos to my phone and then post them on on uh, Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Like people ask, how do you personally do that? And that's how I do it. So anything that is going to have all of the colors is going to be white. So we can just go in here and just kind of do this, you know. This is just red. As you can see, 
it does nothing because of the smart object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on to that. We're gonna go back, save. Now it looks like this. So now when we click on it and we do just red, it should just be red. But there's a threshold here which breaks everything. So we don't wanna do that. We'll get rid of the threshold. We'll fix, fix, figure that out um, after the fact. Is this connected to my computer? No device is connected. Why? <laughs> there. Is it going to connect now? Again, I got this yesterday, so. We'll see what happens. You got a 2013 MacBook Pro. Yeah, I had a. 2012 laptop before I got this 2019 version. So, I mean, I use them because of longevity. I mean, they last forever. So I need to go back into these and actually turn these back on, turn them into smart objects. I have that hotkey to my uh, mouse. So I just turned them into smart objects by clicking something on my mouse. And that's the thing is like, I have a lot of stuff I use my mouse for. So I feel like using a tablet is going to be something that is going to be a little tricky. So now I have it on. Here it is. So now we can now we can draw. See if it's any better. I just moved the same liquify over. So it should duplicate on top of it and turn into like yellow. Because red and green gives you yellow. Like that. Oops. Well, it doesn't really matter. I can go into this liquify now. And I can change this liquify up. So... Uh, maybe we want to swirl some spots. Make this a little bit bigger. I do want to distort some around the edges. Um, just to... Make it so it's not so clean. I want this to be, you know, sort of dirty. And it's getting rid of some of it. So, like, that might not be great. We'll see what that looks like. So, I mean, it already looks kind of cool. Maybe a little bit too too close down here. So, on this last one, we'll just go ahead and add our own liquify to that. Filter, liquify. So, we'll start fresh with this one. And I'm just using this smudge tool. Um, I'm going to turn on stylus pressure because I'm using a stylus, now, a stylus now. So, we'll see if that pressure does anything to that, how hard or soft I hit it so I don't want this to go completely to the edge because I don't want it to be all the same I want it to be different and we're gonna do a we're gonna play around with some settings on this we're gonna add a lot of grain can I add grain in here no um, when we blur it I can do a little bit of a blur and I can add some stuff to that another reason people use max is because a lot of people in the design world use Macs, so then it's like, this is what everybody's using, so file formats are always pretty much the same, even though the file formats are all pretty much the same regardless. Like, a Photoshop document's a Photoshop document, regardless of if you made it on a PC or not, so. I will always advocate for Macs, because I think they're just better computers, but that's just me. I also think Obi Toppin should have won Rookie of the Year, but didn't play, so you know. We all have our opinions. <laughs> Some of them are better than others. By the way, Obi Toppin, I think the Knicks play. Knicks play at 7.30 maybe? I don't know. Possibly, so let's hit okay there. So this is what we've got going on. So it's a good little start, but I think what I want to do is I want to go into the smart object here and this is where I can do some fun stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of the stylus for now. Hey, there you go, thanks Gabe. Um, so this is where we can do some stuff and I've done this sort of style before. You put a threshold on top of it, you filter, you blur it with a little bit of a Gaussian blur and you do that. So a Gaussian blur under a threshold will look like this. So we just can tone this down to like 13. So we'll save that, go back. 
I don't think this is gonna work, but it, this is the same thing. So threshold, uh, you need to have it under, you need to have no transparency, so it needs to be black. And then we'll, it will not liquefy. Filter blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, hold on. Filter, Gaussian blur. Save, go back. So two of them theoretically should have been saved. See, it just looks so weird. Hold on, let me try it. Let me try it on here. We might have to. We might have to do this. I'm gonna change my canvas size to 2,000 by 2,500 because that's what I'm doing. So this is the exact same size as the canvas. So anything that's on here should apply to the canvas. I'm just trying to think of how there's an easier way to do this, which there might be but we're gonna keep doing it this way and we'll see if this works. Cause we're just testing to see if this works, really. Ah. Uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Merge smart object, save. Let me go to this. So it looked like it worked, so that's good. I'm just gonna make this black. Oh, no, just huge, doesn't matter. And then make this the same, 2,000 by 2,500. And then drop this up like this. Whoops, doesn't matter. Now you're saying, I would love to see you do a sports car design sometime, not like an insert, but like a design that would be used for a full set. I have done that a couple times on stream, I think. Okay, now this is gonna break if I hit this button, right? If I convert these to a smart object, Oh, it doesn't break. Good. That's what I wanted. Um, yeah, I'll, I do some sport card designs every once in a while, but you want something, are you saying, Matt, something that would be like, it's like theoretically, if you're making a sports card, like here's the sports card from Panini. Like it's got a basic background and it needs to be something where you can interchange 150 different athletes. So do you want me to make something like that? That would theoretically be the main star of the card? Because the inserts, I know what you're talking about. Those are a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the blur gallery. And I'm gonna go to field blur. So I'm gonna go to field blur, but we're not gonna do anything with it. We're just gonna add a bunch of grain. Like this. Size, I'm gonna increase the grain, decrease the grain. This is where we, this is where we play around. Do it to be really rough, less rough, less rough. Color, highlights down, highlights up. You know, let's just play around and see what stuff does. We'll do that, and then let's add a, ooh, what are these called? Gradient map. All right, so we got a gradient map up. It's right here. We're gonna add in uh, 773141. We're gonna add in a yellow, which is an FFB612. So we've got some scary Terry text going on here. Um, and then here's Terry McLaurin. So this is kind of what we got going on. Now, as you can see, that maroon color that the Redskins used sucks. So we're not gonna use it. Uh, we're gonna use this color instead. There, now it matches better. And we're gonna assume anyone who sees this knows what uh, Scary Terry is. So I'm actually gonna group these together into another uh, smart object. And we're gonna add some noise. Do I wanna add noise or do I wanna add grain? So there's two different ways you can do this. So you can add film grain like this, which kind of what I wanna do. Grain down, grain up. See, that looks terrible. So we don't want to do that. Um, let's do it the smart way. Let's go in here. Let's go into camera raw. And let's... I, you know, I, I've used camera all the time. And I never remember that this is where grain is. So I'm going to bump grain all the way up to the top. And then we're going to go to filter, noise, 
add noise 10% monochromatic there. So that's kind of like this. Now these look a little bit better, but we would just play around with the text at the bottom a little bit more. All right, Andrew, you're asking, what's the best way for someone who is slightly above beginner to grow their design and Photoshop skills? You practice number two programs, but I feel like that only teaches me to do things one way. Do what I did. Um, do a 365 day project where you just try things. Uh, learn new, learn the fundamentals of the tools in Photoshop and then what I did was looked and saw what other people made and tried to figure out how to make that using those tools. Like all these adjustment layers, like learn what a, what a gradient map is, learn what a displacement map is, learn how to use the curves tool. Because essentially this is just a, uh, a tool to use for design. It's like using paint or it's like using oil or markers. You know, we're just using this as a way to um, put down our creativity on paper, essentially, or on screen. I'm gonna hit some buttons, you know, selective color. Like I didn't know what the selective color thing did, you know, until like, I don't know, last year. I just played around and figured out how to use it. So you're Scary Terry. I think there's a little too much grain on this. Let me take away some of this noise. I think that might do it. Let's take away this noise. I think that's fine. Um, let's go here. Yeah, like Chris is saying it's all, it's all practice. Um, you know, like sorry, I just got a thought. You know, pros practice. It's just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna group these together and duplicate them, hide this, turn this into a smart object with this threshold, turn this into a smart object, duplicate this a couple times, and we're gonna turn this into R, G, and B and see what happens. But we're gonna do this with, um, I want a new file. We're just gonna go like this. And then we're gonna go to liquify. This is not what I want it to look like, hold on. What I'm doing is I'm creating some delay, I'm just making a new, I'm making some displacement maps, essentially. I need a hard brush though, because I want these to be real defined lines. And I kind of showed how to do something like this. I think I'm, when I went live last. Oh no, I did it in my uh, Discord critique. Someone had something that looked like this, but it had a big watermark on it from iStock, and I was like, just make your own like this. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm just gonna put a background of, a background. Hold on, double click the background, then you can move it. There, as I turn this off and on, nothing? Okay. So I'm going to now Gaussian blur this just a little bit, like three pixels. I'm going to save this as displace one. Uh, then I'm just going to flip it around and we're gonna name this displace two. Spelling is optional. We're gonna take this one and we're gonna save this as you guessed it, displacement four. Okay. So now what we're going to do is delete, delete. These are all individual smart objects. We're gonna filter, distort, Displacement, Displacement map. map. We're gonna do 10, 10, stretch to fit, whatever, who cares? Did I not save displacement four? Oh, there it is. So displace that like that. And then we're gonna take this one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna displace it 10 on 10, but we're gonna take number two because it's gonna be slightly different. And then we're gonna take this one, filter, displace 10, 10. This is gonna be displacement number four, and it's gonna look like that. And then we take, we can't see anything that happened, so we're gonna hit red, we're gonna hit green, and then we're gonna hit blue. And now it looks super weird. Do I want it to look like this? Who knows? 
Yeah, Quint, I said you I saw you needed somewhere to print them. Honestly, I have no I I have no idea. Pretty much what everybody else said in the Discord of You're gonna have to find somewhere that will do one offs. And I don't know a lot of places that would be like, yeah, that sounds cool, let's do this. So now we've got two different So we've got two different groups of text. So we can figure out which one we like better. We like this one or like this one. Probably this one. We'll leave this on here just because. Okay, so let's do some actual stuff now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to exposure. Let's do like negative two on Terry. I think that's good. We'll do an adjustment of a not selective color. We'll do a color balance. We add a little bit of orange to him like that. So now he's got a little bit of tint of orange. And now we can add back in some of the highlights and shadows. Let's start with the shadows first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down the top end. Yeah, you're gonna, that's the, yeah, you're gonna have to have someone who's not gonna care about where you got the files because it's a personal project. It might be easier if you just tr somehow printed them at home, but I don't know how you are going to do that. It's gotta be worth their while, you know? I don't think a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, here are these 30 cards I'm going to print. Um, I actually don't want this to affect the top end. Let's do it a little bit more. There. Okay, so this is darken, darken. We're gonna label that. We're also going to add some red. So open up the red channel and add a little bit of red. And then we're gonna take away a little bit of blue and that should make it kind of orange. Kind of like that. So that's good. So this is the, these are the shadows. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna paint these shadows. In. And we're gonna do that using our trusty new um, Wacom tablet. So this is me getting used to figuring out how to use this is really what this is. Yeah, it helps to have a good friend at a print shop. So I'm setting the flow and the opacity to 40%. And that's really gonna allow me to get in here. Um, let's, hit, let's do this. Let's darken this a little bit more. You're not, really gonna, you're not really gonna be able to see. What I'm doing is very gradual shadows. Basically picking and choosing where I think a shadow is gonna be. Like you can see what's going on if I do that and it just looks like he pissed himself. So that's actually kind of funny. Let's not do that. I'm gonna use a soft brush actually. And I found that it's really nice to know that shortcut for um, changing a brush size by clicking and dragging. So basically what's happening is this is if I do light pressure, this is if I do dark pressure. So it's just basically changing the size of it. That's what I'm trying to figure out and learn what size is best to do where, where, what, and how. I'm gonna darken up in here. The whole reason I got this tablet was so I can try and refine my lighting techniques. Now we could spend uh, yeah, I'm using pressure brushes. Um, I should be using a pressure brush. Let's check. General brushes. Uh, soft round pressure size. I think that's what I'm using. I would think that's what I'm using at least. 40, 40. Yeah, everything's, nothing's changed. So really what I'm doing is I'm gently putting in some of these, uh, some of these low lights. So you can see it's kind of darkening certain areas. It's really gonna show when, one, we move back. We zoom out a little bit. Maybe I can hit some of these areas a little bit more broadly. Zoom in here. Hit these areas a little bit. You can still, I'm using it as a lower flow and a lower opacity, which should be able to, should allow me to make more defined areas. And I can always go back and tweak this by just swapping back to black, because I'm using white, because I'm just painting these shadows in. 
We're gonna paint these shadows in and then we're gonna paint really delicately like all these ripples on his shirt is what we're going to do. And I found from the two seconds of me using this, I like the tablet if I move the document around where I want to put my hand and not move my hand around where I want to put the document. So I can just use these tiny wrist, tiny wrist movements. Now, is that good? I don't know. It's just how I've done this so far. We're using a 40% opacity brush so we can make multiple strokes in certain areas to put it on layer by layer. We don't want to be too heavy handed. That's something I talk about a lot to younger designers using Photoshop is you can be very heavy handed sometimes with effects. So if you want to do it this way with a lighter brush, you can be heavy handed, but it's putting it on in lighter layers. What's up, Garrett? Flick of the wrist. Garrett, I'll have you record you saying that and then we'll make it a stinger. Or not. All right, so the shadows. Really, I want to darken up a lot of him. So like, he's going to be too bright for what I want because I want to be able to really accentuate some of these highlights. I gotta figure out where the light source is coming from. So like right now it's coming from the back. So he's very, he's way too light right now. But I wanna make sure I have some of these base dark areas on here. Garrett's just mad because we're doing Terry McLaurin who kills his New York Giants whenever they play. All right, so we're gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is what we've done so far. So I'm just gonna turn this off and on. So you can see we're just adding a bunch of definition. You can actually kind of tell where it is. It's actually a little too much, but that's fine. All right, so we're gonna add a curves layer here now. We're gonna brighten it up. We're gonna add some red. And we're gonna get rid of some blue. Just gonna give us this color. If I get rid of some green, it'll turn magenta. So actually if I add green, or just add more red. Really, I could just do this and I'll probably add in some color later with just colored brushes. So we don't want this to affect dark areas. We just want it to affect light areas. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna invert it. Yeah, gradient maps for the shadows and highlights is probably a good idea. Just because it's gonna be consistent and it's gonna give you color as well. This is just the way I've been doing this. Uh, not to say it's the best way to do it, all right, so let's zoom in here. I want white. So now we can go in here, and I think the highlights really show what you can do. You know, how, how delicate you can be. Oh, so first, actually, hold on. Let's do this real quick. I want to select this. Um, duplicate this layer, delete this layer mask, select, modify, contract, let's do three pixels today just because that's way too many pixels, but it's fine. Blur at 5.5. There. Okay. So that gives us a little bit of a base around it, but now I can go in and we can paint more around it like this. You know, we kind of, we probably want to paint like right here, give this a little bit of a highlight. You know, we want to add a highlight right here on his arm. But we don't want it up here. We want it just kind of like this. And this might be too much of an opacity of a brush, to be honest. Because I don't want to really be able to see the line I'm making. I just want to be able to see that it's kind of lighter. And if I can see the line, that means it's too, it's not soft enough. I'm going to add a little bit more here. And add some shine on the ball here. And I can press as hard as I want, but it's just gonna change the size. So I'm just going back and forth lightly. You know, if I wanna fill in some of these areas with brightness, I might do that a little bit more. You can fill in here, fill up here. I'm basically just thinking right now in my head, what on the left side of this ball is getting hit by this theoretical light? You know, how much is getting hit? And that's where having this being extra dark would actually come in handy. And that's why I said it's too light right now. 
that, but so far it's pretty good. Um, it's gonna take me a while to really figure out the ins and outs of how I like it and how I want to use it. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually gonna go into this lighten mode and I'm gonna drop this down just a little bit. So you're really gonna be able to see these a lot more. But you can see it in the ball up here. So maybe I want to pull this up a little bit. Just do that. That's better. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm hitting really lightly on these thin areas because it's making the, the brush thinner. And then if I press harder, it makes it larger. And I just go over and over and over these strokes. Here I can go in here. I'm eventually gonna come over to this side, but we can get to that side later. So the pants are an odd spot, because really I want this to be a lot darker. So to fix that, I can go to this exposure and make it last to negative 1.5. That's gonna help a little bit, but then I'm going to have to make sure I can still lighten up some of these areas. So I'm gonna be a little haphazard with some of these areas where it's light leaking. So anything that's gonna be right offset this white we're actually going to add a little bit of something else to that. But for now, we want to hit, we want to make sure that this is retaining some shapes. So like right here, what I, and this is me guessing based on what I've seen other people do, is like we want to add a light that looks, you know, that's like right here. And then it fills in this area. So light is hitting this. Now, does this look good? Maybe not, but again, this is, this is me testing things, trying to figure out what would have light on it. And this is where practice with this would come in handy. Um, let's go back over here where we were. Like we'll hit like right here, we'll hit on the sides. Basically just accentuating what we did there. And we're gonna go back with a layer of just color. And we're going to add to that. So maybe if we do it a little more heavy handed over here. You see though, where you can see where I'm drawing, theoretically. Um, theoretically, you can see what I'm doing. If you can see this doing anything at all, I can. You guys might not be able to. Um, but we're gonna go and let me go back up here and let's draw on these. And it's, it's real subtle and I just have to trust that it's actually doing something. And I can kind of see that it's doing stuff. But we just need to make sure that I'm hitting and drawing on all these little intricacies in here. And having the blend if on might be deterring some of these in the center here. So we might add another layer that doesn't have a blend if. But like we know right here, this is going to be hit a lot. And I'm using basically where it's already being lit as sort of a, a guide. But then trusting that it's going to hit the edges a lot more. It's like it would, looks like it's going to hit this area a lot more. He was hitting certain spots on his hand. So like this whole area, I would need to lighten this up. And theoretically, I might this might look better if I don't have any color on it and then I do all the coloring after the fact. And generally, you're going to get more colorful colors if you do that. So let's pop in here. Let's let's treat let's tweak that. But sometimes I don't like how this looks when it's just white. So that's why I like adding a little bit of color to it. Let me go here. Let me just change this to no, I know it's not. Let me change this to luminosity. Or normal. Normal looks way better. Ignore what I said. So like Lighten, I'm gonna wanna hit the top of his helmet a whole bunch. You know, this whole side of his helmet's gonna be brighter. But then I should go in with and be really intricate with how light hits the different shapes and sizes of what's going on here. So let's go back out. So this is what it looked like without. This is without and with the highlights. So let me duplicate. Let me just make a new whoops. 
new layer. It looks like that, but you can't see anything because I hit that button. There we go. So this is the same thing. So this is the same layer, but it's just there. And it doesn't have anything on it, which is kind of what I want. But actually, I want to... Actually, no, I need this to not affect certain darkness. Because, like, if you look right here, this doesn't look natural. So I just drag it out a little bit. It looks way better. I also need to go into this initial clipping of him. And then do a uh, select, modify, contract, one pixel. Um, let's delete this. Do a little bit of trimming on it. I think it's a little bit a little unnecessary. Okay, so we go back to our original. This is what we have. I was got I was getting rid of some of the fringe that I knew was on it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of the uh, I'm going to set this to 100% opacity. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of it anywhere where it's not like touching the white. It's like this is touching white. This isn't. This isn't. Just a little bit of spacing there, a little bit of spacing here, a little bit of spacing here. Basically, if it's not immediately touching the white, it's not going to be intensely glowing like it is. I'm going to take it off some of these spots. If it's kind of close to it like that, it's fine because it's going to be emitting some sort of light anyway. But I just want to see if I can get this to be super realistic. And again, we're just I'm playing around with this tablet to see how I can use it. I'm getting more and more used to just actually using it, which is nice. Use it in tandem with with my mouse. This is what we got going on right now, which is kind of nice. So let me duplicate the lighten. Okay, the exposure's fine. So let's add. Let's do what let's do what you said. CT designs. Let's add a gradient map to this. Let me see let me see if this is what I want it to look like though. Let's do that. Let's see how this looks. We need a gradient map. Drop it down so it doesn't affect that. Sorry, we're gonna use a. Because I love me some gradient maps. So let's go in here. And let's use white at 30% opacity. See, this is super intense now. So let's use like 10%. Yeah, so if I use 10%, I can really go in here with the fine details and blend this all in. I'm using a big brush because I can brush real delicately and it's not going to... I don't know, I can't really show... Oh, can I show? No, I can't really. I can draw real light and it'll still do what I want. And then if I just draw a bit harder, it'll make the brush larger. But we don't want to do that. So I have the gradient map set to screen. So it's going to screen on and add a highlight to this. But on the gradient map itself, I'm going to drag the yellow over a lot. I kind of almost want to get that. Oh, it's set to screen. Let's do that. That should be fine. I'm thinking of some of these spots that are under the white you can't really see. Maybe you can see it better here. So we might have to fix that in a couple spots. I jump this up to 20% and we'll just narrow this down a little bit and let's zoom in. Okay. So now we're basically going to mimic sort of what we did here. I mean, I could probably just go like this and lighten and it kind of works, but you can see in some of the areas it was super heavy handed, which is not good. So we're going to be really heavy handed on some of these areas um, just to add in some of this color. But if we do it with a 20% brush, 
we can be a little heavy handed because if we even if we go over it three times, it's still only 60% op opacity is what we're thinking. So that's the thinking behind it or the logic behind it that I'm convincing myself is a good idea. Uh, so we'll do this, go around here. I'm trying to think of where on here he's going to have the light hit. And I think it's going to be a lot of his shirt. I think the more I show this, the more it's going to, the better it's going to look. Let me go back into this gradient map just a little bit. Pull this back just a teeny bit. Because now it's actually, it's going to show a lot better in the shirt here. So we're, we'll do the whole shirt. We'll do it over here. Hopefully this looks really nice. We're not really going to know how this looks as a whole until we zoom out. And this is the kind of thing I've said before on stream. Like, I know I've talked about Jonathan Oxto on here. But, like, he might spend 30 minutes doing this. Which seems obnoxious. But it looks really, really nice. And that's really the thing. Is if you're going to... The more time you spend figuring out how to do it, the better it's going to look. And then... Once you have that sort of craft down and process of how you do it, it gets quicker and easier. And then you know what the results are going to be when you get it. So you'd know that it's worth spending 30 minutes doing. I'm using a bigger brush just to highlight a little bit more of these areas. Because we did darken him, and darken him up again. So I just want to make sure some of these areas are shining through a little lighter. Okay, so now down here, I'm not really certain what I want to do with this. So you see, I can color like this on it. And like sort of color this area as like highlighted. But it's really yellow and it doesn't look good. So like, I'm going to paint it in. You know, real faintly like this. But I'm then going to go back with a black brush set to like 40%. I'm going to... And I'm going to erase some of it off. So it's sort of like a gradient 40% brush. There we go. So it's a little bit more faint. Um, then I'm going to go back in with this lighter brush. This is at 40%, so that's bad. Uh, let's do 10%. I'm just going to try and draw like a little highlight line here because I feel like this would have a highlight on it but again I might be completely wrong in my thinking in this right now you know who knows it is all in the details once you get to a certain point let me dumb this back down 10% is good oh no let's do 20% is what we're using be a little bit more heavy handed so I'll pace back I'll, I'll come back in a little bit so we can see what this looks like with and without because this I don't know I mean honestly this could this could be looking terrible like this it could look that like oh it looks like someone just drew a crayon on some areas and the yellow looks really bad so let's pop back out this is what it looks like I think it actually looks pretty solid it's a little heavy right here but I can um, just make the rest of this area lighter and it'll help out so I'll be a little heavy handed right now to lighten up some areas as a whole. So lighten up some areas as a whole. Sort of give this sort of fringe we've got going around. Cut it back in certain areas. And actually I have to remember, this is actually painting in red in the darker areas because the gradient map is red to white. So if I paint somewhere that's too dark, it's going to turn it red, which is kind of fine. Okay, so this area, I want to fix this out completely. Kind of like that. Okay. We're going to save because we haven't saved yet. <laughs> and it's been 50 minutes. Harry, Scary, McLaurin, whatever. You know his name. So here's what the gradient map is adding. So I think that looks awesome let me zoom in so you can see this 
just like mainly on his jersey. That's really where I'm focusing. Like, it's adding in a lot of detail, which looks great. So we'll go in and we'll add in some more detail on his face. Cause really the places they're gonna, someone is going to look at this and focus on is mainly gonna be his face. So I would really wanna be really delicate with this, figuring out where light is going to hit his face. So it's gonna hit it here. And the only way to figure this out is a couple things. Trial and error and looking at like photography of like where it's gonna be hit. Let's, let's just keep zooming in for no reason. Okay, I wanted to get rid of the lines that show up on the pixels. So I'm gonna draw some white on his little pacifier he's got going on here. His mouth guard is what it is. And basically what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of the shadows that I put on here originally. And I'm gonna lighten up a lot of his face mask here to brighten this back up because this would be brighter. What's up, Kevo? I do have some keys. There's two buttons on this pen and I have them keyed to uh, brush size. So I can make the brush size lighter or smaller whenever I wish. That's what I had on my mouse. So I like having that just at my thumb, my thumb tip whenever I wish. Now I could just use the keys on with my left hand, but we're just gonna do it this way. So I'm just painting in these strokes to continue this lighting because we want the whole mask to be lit and brighter. Oh, no, my camera is reversed. This is my right hand, this is my left hand. My camera is reversed, so I'm looking at you guys specifically. It's like a tip for like streaming, it's like, Make it so you're looking at your subject. So if I look over here and talk to you guys, like my camera's here, so I'm looking up there. I'm not looking away outside the box. It's what I tell people when they design stuff too, is make sure your subject, you're looking at your subject, you're not guiding them off camera. So that's, that's what's going on. No, I'm definitely right-handed. I, I never thought of that. Yeah, Tyler, I'm trying to make it so like, I want to use this a lot and I do a lot of these like the same lighting for a lot of the pieces I do so I'm going to use this all the time hopefully to figure out uh, just better ways to get finer details in some of the lighting that I do in designs. So this theoretically would have a lot of light on it. So I'm going back in certain spots I already hit. So like, like we're gonna hit the edge of this ball, which theoretically would look cool. And as we get further away from the edge, I'm gonna make the brush bigger. That way it's not as fine of a detail. And since we're using a 20% brush, it's only putting 20% in that area instead of like 60 or 100 like on the edge here. I think it's a little too much. I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. That's black, I don't want that, I want white. There we go. And I think adding these little highlights to this ball, like I couldn't do this as easily with a mouse, which is why I wanted to get this tablet. Garrett, I only design subjects looking away. Best to save them from that monstrosity. I don't know how that fits with that, but you, you, you burned yourself. We like to have fun on this stream. I need to get my sheesh button, my sheesh, sheesh button working and my that's fire bro, because I like deleted the files or something, so they're gone. I gotta fix it. We need our That's Fire Bro back. Okay, so over here, I want to draw this sort of edge, kind of like we did before, you know? But then take black and 
take away from it. We just want the little edge of it. And maybe we want the whole thing to be a little bit more lit up, but maybe just like 10%. Real faint. Something like that, you know? Who knows? Let's go back to zero. So like this looks, this is looking pretty cool. I have it right here. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I think it plays an audio file on my computer that says shh. Yes, it plays an audio file on my computer, which just played, which nobody wants. Okay, so we've got a lot going on. I'm going to add, delete this, to delete this, not that. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate the gradient. Oh, let's see what that looks like. Duplicate the gradient map. Apply it to this. I like how that looks, but I think it's a little too bold. So I'm just gonna go up to filter. Blur. I'm just gonna blur the mask. So I'm gonna blur the mask like five pixels. And it's gonna be a little bit more subtle. And then I'm gonna set it to like 50%. So now it looks like this, before or after. It's just adding a little bit more on it. Let's make it 60, let's make it 69%. Oh, it doesn't work like it should. That's a bummer. Oh well. Okay, so gradient map, gradient map. I need to add some more light in some areas. And again, this I hope I hope you guys are enjoying. I know this isn't like I know I do a lot of talking on like method and stuff like that and creating designs. And this is a very simple design. It's just more of the lighting that's really selling it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this, even though it's a little bit of a departure from what we usually see on here. So I'm gonna duplicate this and set it to multiply. I'm actually getting really used to using this stylus to move around. Okay. I mean, that looks kind of nice. Like that looks kind of cool. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna have this not affect the the high end areas, which you can't see. So don't affect like those areas. So now we'll invert this. See, the thing is I have an iPad and I was trying to, actually what happened was my Apple Pencil wasn't working. So I said, I'm just gonna buy one of these. I'll expense it anyway. I'll expense it, talk to my, my boss about it. No big deal. All right, so we're gonna put some shadows back in here now. I'm gonna be a little, I'm usually a little more heavy handed when it comes to the shadows. Which might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. I don't know. I don't think it really matters. It's for the business. It's already paying off right now. From all the money I'm gonna make off this YouTube video, it's gonna pay for itself. It's also um, a total joke. I'll just tw I'll just tweet at Mr. Beast and be like, "Hey, Mr. Beast, can you pay for this tablet? Thanks." I'd be like, "Sure, Brad." Actually, Garrett might know Mr. Beast more than me. He's got the end with the YouTubers. It's for the brand. What's up, Ivan? I need to throw out some hammers. Hey Garrett, can you make people moderators? Is that is that part of your mod abilities to make other people moderators? Let's make some people moderators. Hold on. You get a wrench. Uh, you get a wrench. You get a wrench. Come on. Ivan, you get a wrench. There. Wrenches. I've got, I got the, I have the medium. I think it just depends on, I don't know, it's all preference. It's the medium, it's like that, it's the total scam of marketing where it's, the medium is X amount of dollars, so you might as well get that one. Because price wise, it's the best deal, yada yada. It's not the cheapest one, it's the middle one, it's that whole scam. That gets you every time. So I got the medium one. And it was on sale. 
even though they were all they all were on sale because of Black Friday. Um, funny story. So like, I was looking at these Friday night, trying to figure out which one I wanted to get for Black Friday, and I found one on Best Buy, and I was like, oh, I can just pick it up at Best Buy because I can get it the same immediately, instant gratification. Well, I went on there and I could buy it and pick it up the next day, but I was like, no, I'll just I'll just buy it tomorrow. Like, there's no point. I can just buy it tomorrow. No big deal. Um, but turns out Black Friday actually was only on Black Friday for Best Buy. So then I just bought it on Amazon and got it Monday. I would wait for it. Let me see what this guy does. You, you, you are now uh, part of the cool kids club. It means you can you can silence people. I guess if everybody has a wrench, it means nothing. But you know. Oh well. Let's draw some more in here. Darken up some of these areas. I need to make sure I don't hit the outside. I just want to hit the inside. And I'm going to bump this up to like 50%. Really darken these areas up. And the thing is, it's kind of not really darkening these areas up. It's using a gradient map, but it is. I need to hit this helmet with details. That's something I haven't done yet that I need to fix and do. So really, I want to go in here with like a 70% brush. I want to make it a lot larger. And I want to darken up everything underneath here 50% I want to just darken this up because this should be a lot darker and this is gonna actually make it look a lot better uh, let's do 20% a lot bigger darken up this area darken up these pants darken them darken them darken them darken them Okay, so I want to go to this the gradient map I have here. And I want the opacity to be a little bit more. I want to get rid of... There's like a halo here. You can see this haloing on the ball. That's bad. Let me see if I can get rid of that. Kind of. I don't know, if, I don't know what areas this is all in. So I gotta just test and just get rid of anything that's in this area. I think that mostly does it. So let's pop back out. This is what we've got going on now. So dark, so we, this is what we did with the really darkened with that gradient map, which actually looks really nice. I think we just need to add in some more highlights up here. Let me turn this back on. So we need to go in here. Um, I'm at 40%. I want to do 20%, like I said, make the brush a little bit bigger. Lighten up the whole front here. Basically, we're reversing like this whole darkening we did. That's really what we're doing. Whoops. Whoops. So the use of gradient map for lighting, when you add a gradient map to something, it changes the color. But when you set it to screen, it lightens everything up. So like, here, I'll duplicate what we have on here. I'm gonna set this to normal. Let me grab a mouse that's gonna want, that's gonna actually do what I want. So this gradient map is set to normal. I'll delete the layer mask. So this is what it is. The gradient map is changing the colors yeah, Ivan, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna do a lot more lighting to the to the head. When I set it to screen, man, I'm hitting all the right buttons. So screen, it looks like this. Normal screen, normal screen. So you see it's brightening everything up and adding to it. It's making everything a little bit brighter. So it's making it 
brighter with the same colors I used in the background. So it's the same gradient map, it's the same colors. So actually it's a pretty good method of doing it. And if I set it to multiply, it multiplies on top of it. It makes everything darker. So then you can use it to darken. Uh, it's actually it's a pretty smart method. Okay, so let's go in here. Zoom. Okay, white. 20%, good. Okay, so I wanna hit right here. I wanna hit right here. I wanna hit right here. So there's these like random corner spots that would be hit with highlights, I think, a little bit more than others. And these are some of the details, like right here. Like this tiny, tiny edge here. And this tiny, tiny edge here would be brighter than everything else. So we're gonna make it brighter than everything else. This right here would be brighter than everything else. So we're gonna paint on here and make it brighter. This I feel like would be still brighter even more. So you can add, okay, so can do light and shadow with the gradient and you choose the colors by picking them from the player. Yeah, I, you can pick them from the player or pick them from whatever colors you want. I just use the same ones I used in the background, um, which happens to be uh, the colors for the team, except they were a little odd. So I just pulled a play. I just pulled one from his jersey, correct. So these would be a little bit brighter. You know, some of these areas. What we're doing is we're just reversing the effects we had from doing the exposure. In some of these areas, I might be hitting incorrectly, but that's what these tests are for. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. Then we're gonna take this gradient, which we have on top of it, and we're just gonna be, we're gonna be real heavy handed with this. This is set to 69%. And we can also go in and we can change um, we can change that initial exposure. Oh yeah, anyone have monitor recommendations? That's a good question. I have three different monitors. This one's crap and it's an HP I got pretty much for free. The other two I use are LGs. That's for sure. I feel like you can't go wrong with a monitor these days too. We live in such a great time. Just all this nice tech at our fingertips to use. His hand needs to be a little bit brighter. Go in here. Brighten his hand up just a little bit. So it matches a little bit more. His face a little bit more. And then we'll just hit with a little bit of a brush. Sort of like that. Okay. So like this looks pretty sweet. So we can do if we want, and I think this is gonna look bad, so we're probably gonna get rid of it. Um, exposure, so let's take the exposure and let's have it not hit the top end. Yeah, see that looks terrible, so we're gonna keep that off. So I mean, this looks cool right now. Scary Terry, he's got some fire text behind him. Uh, we'll delete these things that are going on here. I think sort of mission accomplished on what we were trying to do. See if I can just take this like background color. Okay. Do we like that better? Instead, it's a multiply, it makes it a little bit darker. I don't really care. Let's do this. Uh, let's mask this now with a gradient that's coming from the center. No, we'll use a brush. Um, and we're going to use a Thinner brush like that. 
Maybe I'll just make it bigger. Mask. Hold on. There it goes. Takes forever. So we mask that, then we're gonna set it to screen, and then we're gonna invert this layer. And we're gonna set that actually to overlay. Might be a little bit better. What do you want to tell Joe Byron right now? I don't, I don't know, Garrett. I don't, couldn't, couldn't tell you. All right, let's pop bridge open. Let's add some front stuff to this. Um, what do we want to add? We got a lot of fire stuff going on. Oh, we doing some we doing some bing bonging right now. So we got some like random fire stuff in here. No, none of that. None of none of that. What's up, baby? Come to Coney Island. Man, honestly, putting this tiny little thing in the front like this just makes it look so much better. We just have this like fire thing going on. Uh, what else do we got in here? We got, we got like random stuff in here. Like this is a, an explosion in 4K. Oh, these are always good. Add these to the front. Uh, do we have some flames I can just put at the bottom? No, I don't want to make a bing bong stinger. Okay, we need we need some. I think we need some light coming from the sides. Let's go to Ethan J Designs Mega Bundle because it's amazing. Let's go to the light leaks. These are all too small. Everything is too small. We'll let you. We'll use this actually. This is pretty, pretty nice. We'll just stretch it egregiously, which I hate to do. But if I just take this gradient map and toss it on top of that and delete the layer mask, and it's a gradient map. <laughs> And we can do that. I think that looks pretty nice. Take a little bit of a levels layer and go whoop. Little, little Berman. See, I could set the ball on fire, but then I would have to change all of the lighting because it wouldn't make any sense, theoretically. And we're all about theory here. Hue, color, hue, color, color. I'm just gonna do some other stuff. What was it? Oh, okay, I'm gonna save because this is gonna break everything. Pen tool. Draw a straight line. Did it. Shape. Edit. Image. Layer. Render. Filter, render, blank. Filter, render, blank. Yeah, I need a path filter. Oh, I did a shape, I need to do a path. Pen tool, path. Straight line, filter, uh, render, flame. By the way, you can render fire in Photoshop. So let's do multiple flames one direction. Let's change the length to be a lot higher. I want it to be wider. The angle's fine at zero. Tweak the interval a little bit. I wanna use a custom color for the flames. Um, I wanna use, I don't know, something a little darker, something like that. Oh, that's too much. Okay, let's brighten it up a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Quality, let's do fine, which is very, very slow. Let's randomize the length, which is good. Uh, let's go to advanced. Change the turbulent and the jag of it. The opacity is fine. Let's up the complexity a little bit. Flame bottom alignment. We can get rid of flame shape. Let's do oval flame style of violent randomized shapes perfect and okay 
And boom, now we have fire at the bottom that we rendered with Photoshop. And it actually looks pretty nice. We're gonna turn that into a smart object, toss it at the bottom here, it's in the front. We're gonna duplicate it, we're gonna filter blur, we're gonna Gaussian blur it like 100 pixels and set that to screen. And we're gonna really stretch the crap out of it. Can I not stretch the crap out of it? If I blur it and then stretch it, does that, does that work? Being real weird. Okay. Hello, working path. Here, get rid of you. Yes. Die, working path. Stretch this out. Kind of like that, but then we don't want it to hit some of these underlying layers. Kind of like that looks terrible. I'll just set the opacity like 40. There, now we got scary terror and we got some fire. That looks pretty good. We got all this time left still. Okay, so let's add some more lighting then. Uh, let's take our same gradient map we had before. Boop, gradient map. Set it to screen at 100%. We're gonna delete the layer mask and invert it completely. And we're gonna real... Uh, we're gonna do pressure size brush, that's good. And real haphazardly, at like 10%. Just draw along the edges here. To really brighten up some of these areas. And actually what I want to do is I'll go down here and I'm gonna brighten up these shoe I'm gonna brighten up the shoes now because we have sort of this light source from the bottom now that has nothing to do with anything up here. So it completely breaks everything, but it's fine because it looks actually, it looks pretty baller. Let's move it down like that. Scary Terry. This looks a lot like something I made with Jamal Charles actually. Uh, do we want to move the Scary Terry text now? Just a little bit. Can we move the Scary Terry text? No. No, we can't. So, Scary Terry, it might honestly look best if we don't. See, like, look how bad this looks without the text. We need the text behind it. Really sells it. So let's add some color lookups now. See, there's edgy amber, which is not gonna look good. There's a couple in here that might look decent for like a fire. Candlelight, what else do we have? Soft warming. Off, on, off, on. Kinda looks nice. Set that to like 50%. Uh, let's pick one of Ethan J's here. Actually, I'm gonna set this to 25. Let's see if one of these Make It Pops looks nice. Probably not. I think we have a lot going on. Especially at 100%, I think it might look bad. But if you see one that you think catches your eye, I think 20 looks nice. I think I use some of these down here often. Set it to like 50%. Off, on, off, on. Let's try one of these teal and orange ones. Because this is going to affect the whites. Now we're not going to use one of those. And we're going to get rid of that one. Uh, we're just going to go to selective color layer, boost the yellows, boost the reds a little bit. And then we'll do some final editing in camera. Camera raw. Camera raw. That's what it's called. So we'll hop over here. Hopefully the stream is not breaking. It looks like it might be, so that kind of sucks. You guys let me know if it's breaking completely or if you guys can still see me. Hmm. I'm gonna keep going because hopefully it's, hopefully it's working. Uh, basic, we're gonna add some more contrast. We're gonna dumb down the highlights a little bit. Up the shadows, whites, blacks. Let's add a little bit of texture and let's add some clarity. That's too much clarity. Okay, it's all fine. Okay, I'm looking over here and it's stupid broken, so it's fine. Uh, let's sharpen it a little bit and let's add some grain. Cause I think adding some grain here is gonna blend in everything to the back. So that's good. 
So this is without the effects, with, without, with, without, with, without, with. Eh. Might be a little too much green. Okay. Boom. What else do we need to add to this? We need to add a lens dirt just because I made it, so it has to have a lens dirt on it. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Uh, let's duplicate this gradient map. Toss it on top like that. Set it to color. I don't like it when it's not proportionately correct. Set that to screen and we'll set that to like 40%. I think that's probably it. What do you guys think? Is there anything you think we should add to this? Maybe we get rid of that and just keep the dark background. Do we like it with the red? Or do we like it with the black? I think the red looks nice. I think it just needs to be a little bit darker. Kind of like that. We'll do that. We'll actually keep the lens dirt underneath this and we'll put that in with the effects because that's usually what I do. There we go, that's what we're looking at. Let's duplicate this top layer for no reason. Uh, filter, distort, displace. Displace it with the displacement two. Man, that looks cool. What do, you mean what do you mean composite snapshot? Let me go into the color grading and let me go into the highlights and I'll just add like a teeny bit of, teeny bit of green in there. Same with the midtones. Maybe a little bit of cyan. In the midtones, but then the shadows have a little bit of orange, like that. Yeah, I think that I think that looks looks pretty good. Uh, let's give this whole thing. Do we need to do a field blur of this? Maybe. Do so like field blur it up here with all the grain in the world. Kind of like that. And then we have zero, zero blur here. And zero blur here. And zero blur here. Really just in these corners where there's blur. That's really all I'm adding. Blurry corners. Actually. This is what I want to do. Okay, so. I can do this quickly, so it's not a problem. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our dear friends here. You guys got very confused that I couldn't mask that, and it makes sense actually now, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, look at this. What are we gonna do with this? Hey, let's add a uh, good old radiant map. <laughs> We're just gonna use like a normal gradient map though, not one of these stupid gradient maps. What are we looking at? Like that? Okay, we need a lot more white though. Kind of. That's fine. Ah, save. I'm gonna save this to my desktop as not a large PSP file, as fire displays. And actually, we're gonna do. Oh man, that's that's a that's a bummer. Hold on. delete this copy this go back to where we were we're here we're gonna paste it there. this is what I want I want that this is what I want this is what I want what I really really want great map can be a little bit more normal now like that save okay so now we go here 
We've got all our fire and this that's all that's all cool and stuff. Let me take this and convert it to a smart object. Then we go to blur, then we go to distorts, uh, displace with a displacement map. And theoretically, we hit enter on this fire displace, and it theoretically should make it look a little foggy down here, but it didn't, so it kind of failed. Um, let's go back to this. Let's drag this over a little bit. Drag this over like that. Let's stretch this out like that and blur this. Save that. Now go back here. Uh, let's go to filter, distort, displace. I don't want to displace it at all horizontally. I just want to displace it vertically maybe yeah that's pretty much what I wanted it to do but not so much man that looks cool okay let's dumb this down just a little bit let's try it again I guess I could just do that Basically trying to make it so his feet look like they're being distorted from the flames. Which is kind of, kind of what is happening. Do not crop. That's fine. I think it adds a little wonkiness to it. Let's do it. Let's actually increase it just a little bit more. Let's do like 18. Ah. Fire. Yeah, that looks cool. Makes his foot look really messed up, but that's fun. Throw our smart filters back on and boom. Man, that adds like a ton of color. Like before, after, before, after. I actually don't like that. Hold on. What are we doing to this? Let's tone down some of these camera raw effects. It's just something's off that I don't like. It might be the coloring. It might be the color grading. Is it the green? Is it just too much green? It might be just too much green. Let's actually change the midtones to be a little bit orange. I think that'll make me feel better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. There we go. Nice scary terror design. Thank you guys for joining me on this lovely adventure with my Wacom tablet and this pencil. I think we did some pretty dope lighting with it, so that's great. You think the color's off? What's off? What's off with the color? Oh, it's much better now? Okay. Oh, you said the color looked off when I was fixing it. Okay. I agree. Um, yeah, this was fun to do. This is going to be fun to use this tablet. I'll let you guys know in the next upcoming weeks how I'm getting used to it and stuff like that. Some tips and tricks. But thank you for joining me on this test. Got a nice scary terror design with some cool typography. That's flames in the background, flames in the front. There's fire everywhere. Everything looks great. So... Um, I might be streaming Thursday. I'll let you guys know on Twitter. Um, if you guys want uh, to join my Discord, there's a link in the bio below. You can join that. I do critiques every week for people in that. Turning out to be a lot more critiques than I thought, which is amazing. No problem there. Uh, other than that, I'm happy you guys were quick to select to spend your time with me this evening. You guys have a lovely Tuesday afternoon. Bing bong. Let's go Knicks. Hopefully Obi Toppin actually gets some playing time. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys.